Hi, everybody. Uh, one of my Twitter contacts asked me to make a video about how to use the screen and link page that is there on Alpha Leaks. So I'm just making this short video to explain what all is there on that page and how to use it. Yeah, so as soon as you get onto Alpha Leaks, you'll see one major, uh, one big red button, that's the screener links. So you can uh, get onto that button and uh, you'll reach this page. This page is broadly divided into two halves. Uh, one is related to the indices and another related to individual stocks, which is below. So, uh, so related to the indices, uh, first, uh, this was one of the first articles that I had done uh, regarding your uh, autocorrelation and linear regression to find out the trend of Nifty. So uh, this I had mainly done so that uh, to improve upon the BTST uh, backtest, basically the BTST sig uh, signal of uh, uh, buying at today's close and selling tomorrow op uh, open. So I realized that if the Nifty was in positive momentum or having a uh, autocorrelation as well as lin linear regression of positive, that would uh, actually lead to a better signal. And if it is negative, then you can avoid. So uh, that is all about this one. Like you can read about it at this BTST blurb. This was the first article of this uh, website. Uh, it is pretty self-explanatory. And since I'm targeting more of uh, retail investors nowadays rather than uh, going for uh, derivative-based trades. So uh, after that, I basically stopped uh, doing any of these derivative related stuff. So coming to the uh, next one, which is uh, Nifty Momentum Signal for Efficient SIP. So this was uh, created because I realized that many of us uh, do SIP in Nifty, but we do it as a blind uh, SIP time-based basically. Like any day of the month, uh, uh, the money will be deducted and the next day the money will be used to pick up uh, Nifty units. So then I realized that uh, it would be much more efficient if we were able to uh, do the SIP or basically uh, buy up Nifty units when it was actually cheap. That is, uh, it was more value than other times when it is in positive momentum. So this I did the back test uh, and there was one more uh, point about this that uh, uh, since most of the uh, mutual funds as well as pension funds, they uh, buy into the Nifty at the beginning. That is the beginning of the month, the first week or so. That is why buying on in the beginning of the month is not as efficient as buying in uh, towards the end of the month because uh, in the beginning of the month, because of the uh, this buying itself, Nifty might increase. So because of that, it's better to buy when it is towards the end. There's a backtest about this also that I've done. You can uh, look at that backtest uh, in this link. So in this, it's very simple. If this, uh, this status can be of four types, either it is positive, negative, or recent bounce or recent crash. Okay, so if it is positive or recent bounce, uh, then please do not buy. And if it is recent crash or uh, negative, then you can buy. But this signal is specific, very specific to the last day of the month. Okay, so if you buy it at the last day of the month, it will lead to, and if it is a negative momentum, then it will lead to a very good uh, accumulation of Nifty units. Basically, you will get more bang for your buck if you do it this way. Next, it's an, uh, next is the index momentum screener. This one I had uh, 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 this one I had done because I was playing around with uh, momentum and uh, the, you know, like applying the momentum as it is done to stocks. The NSE methodology of momentum I had applied it to indices. So uh, this basically uh, uh, calculates the momentum of all of the sectors which are there in the uh, index half copy of uh, NSE. And it uh, ranks them based on that momentum. So momentum can be positive to negative. So based on that, it will rank it. And if the momentum is, uh, so in this, another uh, back test that I had done was uh, buying, the, uh, buying those sectors which are at the negative momentum, basically the least momentum of all the sectors. Uh, uh, the back test was done for every day. So it was not a very good back test. It was a very naive type of back test. But it uh, returned and the returns were equivalent, sort of equivalent to that of Nifty. Like sometimes it is above mid Nifty, sometimes it is below Nifty. But uh, this I would not consider as an excellent uh, thing. But uh, still, I've been using it over the last one and a half years. Like uh, every week uh, after the expiry, after Nifty expiry, 
that is on Friday, uh, whichever is the least momentum sector, I've been accumulating that. And that has actually helped me in accumulating a lot of that IT sector because that was the uh, least momentum for most of the year. And uh, now it is giving me excellent returns. So like that, similarly, I did uh, I done for oil and gas also because that had also fallen out of favor for quite some time. And that has also given me excellent returns. So I have some anecdotal reasons to believe that this might work. So because of that, uh, I still stick to it. Uh, that is uh, uh, on every Friday, I buy up the uh, least momentum sector, whichever ETF, if the ETF is available, I'll uh, buy that up. And then I'll just hold on to it and wait for it to appreciate. Uh, this was... Another uh, follow up of this one, because uh, these sectors, uh, these momentum basically keep changing uh, every day and uh, uh, the rank of the uh, sectors based on the momentum also keeps changing. So this was basically this next table is to keep track of that on each of those days. What was the rank of uh, uh, with, uh, what was the rank of uh, each sector? So in this, basically, uh, I, I've simply done a linear regression to get a slope of the uh, ranks. And if the uh, if the slope is highest, then it is figure, uh, figured at the top, meaning that relative to the other sectors, this sector is climbing up the fastest now. And similarly, uh, uh, least is the negative one, meaning that relative to the other sectors, uh, this uh, sector is falling down the most. So if it is useful for your decision making, please use it. But I have not conducted any formal backtest. Whatever formal backtest based on the ranks I had done, they were completely shit. So I don't know whether it is that useful or not. Next, coming to the bounce strategy of indices, this is something that is really interesting. So in this, what I had done was I had considered three uh, factors. One was a, a five-day autocorrelation, a five-day five linear regression slope, and 60-day linear regression slope. So this was based on the fact that, uh, 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 like, basically, if a index is falling, meaning that it is in negative momentum, that time buying it is basically like catching the falling knife, right? You can get more losses eventually. So better than that, you identify those sectors which have fallen and are now bouncing back. Okay, so basically, it's like 60 days negative uh, slope of linear regression five day positive slope and the autocorrelation is also positive, meaning that it is sort of pretty smooth up, uh, which is happening now. So based on that, uh, I had made two signals, buy signal and sell signal. By, I had only backtested the buy signal. The buy signal is basically if this is negative, if slope five is positive and the autocorrelation is positive, then uh, this will give a buy signal. So Nifty FMCG has uh, was giving the buy signal for the last uh, few days. Now it is Nifty Financial Services. So uh, if you buy this, you will get returns better than Nifty. So this is back tested, and this uh, this has been uh, provided in this article below. The sell signal I just uh, uh, made it just to augment the benefit that this can have. Like if you choose to make a, a play such that like even when a buy signal comes, you buy, and uh, after that when the sell signal comes, you sell something like that. The sell signal is based on the fact that your uh, slope of 60 is positive and uh, uh, slope of 5 is negative and autocorrelation is negative. Okay. So based on that, uh, if a sector has stopped out and is falling, uh, it, it is this sell signal basically tells you that. So you know, like consumer durables uh, has a, a, a falling happening now and uh, Nifty Media, Nifty Metal, they are having fall uh, right now. So like that, basically, it will tell you which ones are falling. So for a long time, this was completely uh, nope, 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 meaning that uh, there was no signal whatsoever in all of the indices. But recently, like uh, as recent as one and a half weeks back, uh, some of the, them have been showing sell signals and now a lot of them are actually showing sell signals. This uh, portfolio weights based on mean variance optimization. This was again a mean variance portfolio construction attempt by me based on the indices. And uh, uh, this eventually I realized is an extremely shit method because this is uh, this looks too far back and uh, basically whatever moves had to happen have already happened and it is uh, not really giving you any benefits right now. So I had, uh, the results were far short of uh, what you will expect. So I basically gave up on this. This just put here as something like basically uh, it is something which is updated in my daily uh, algorithm that I've created and it gets reflected here. 
Next, there's the correlation matrix between indices. There is no formal backtest about this. This is just for visual viewing pleasure to see whether the uh, indices uh, are correlated among themselves or not. Meaning that uh, when uh, Nifty is going up, like this is the line for Nifty 50. So if Nifty is going up, how are the other uh, sectors behaving relative to Nifty? Like if Nifty is going up and Nifty Auto is also going up, then, uh, then it will be a, a strong green. And if Nifty is going up and Auto is going down, then it will be a strong red. If Nifty is going up and this is not doing anything, then it will be basically a very small dot and transparent types. So uh, this is uh, for, uh, I think, 20 days. So this is for the last 20 days, that is one month. So uh, similarly, 50 and 100 day window correlations were are also done. And this is provided in this uh, 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 on this blog post. So this may not help you much in decision making, but uh, if there is a lot of churn happening in the indices that can easily be identified by just looking at this, it will be basically a, a splotches of small red, uh, transparent, uh, small green like that, basically relative to Nifty on the Nifty row and also among each other. So this basically shows a churning happening. If it is solid green, that basically shows that in the last 20 days, your uh, all of the sectors have been moving similar to Nifty. So basically, there's a lot of correlated buying or correlate, like basically uh, concerted buying or concerted selling happening across the sectors. Next, coming to individual stocks, this is the most recent one. Uh, and this is the trend screener that uh, I unveiled very recently. So uh, in this, if you are, uh, so this, uh, is based on your five-day autocorrelation, five-day linear regression, 20-day linear regression, and 60-day linear regression slope. So if your five-day autocorrelation is positive, meaning that it is a smooth uptrend, and uh, day five linear regression and all these three are positive and significant, statistically significant, only then that stock is selected for that day to be shown on the screener. Okay, so this one has been thoroughly backtested, like shit, it has been thoroughly backtested. And uh, uh, you know, like basically, you uh, the back test was done for randomly selecting any one of the stocks. Like this same rule will be applied to large cap universe, mid cap universe, as well as small cap and micro cap universe. But uh, micro cap doesn't really show much benefits. So you are uh, best is you uh, stick to large caps and mid caps. And even among that, uh, like basically the back test was that among each universe, if you randomly select uh, any stock on any given day and you hold it for 20 days, uh, you are likely to get a, a good return and to uh, good return. And also uh, if you uh, to get over the fact that, okay, sometimes uh, the returns may be regime dependent and so on and so forth, I had done an extensive path analysis uh, in, the, in which I had uh, messed up the order of the uh, order of these also, as well as uh, the random uh, randomization based on the, uh, randomly selected uh, stock of any given day. So, um, uh, so you can, I would prefer that, like, uh, I'll tell you what I am doing in this. Uh, I'm basically looking at these two tables and uh, whenever, whichever day I want to start my investment, I am randomly selecting two of this and two of this and equally distributing my capital among all of them. And I'll hold them for 20 days and then I'll sell without looking at the price, basically. After that, I'll uh, use whatever money has come uh, from that, uh, whether it's a profit or a loss, and I'm going to uh, put it back again, equally distributing among uh, four, five, six stocks uh, selected from uh, this these two universes. So this is basically creating more of a diversified basket. So remember that if you make a diversified basket, your returns are mostly going to be capped. Okay, but the vol volatility that you are going to get is also going to be low. So that is the benefit of diversification, right? But uh, if you stick to the single stock random, like basically uh, you start with 10K and you just randomly select one stock and buy into it, wait for 20 days, sell, and again buy into the any uh, other random stock, that was tested by the back tested, and that is actually pretty good. But I would still prefer diversifying, like I'm a for two, so. Okay, so then after that, there is a, uh, the momentum stocks uh, screener. This was created based on the methodology that uh, NSE provides of uh, calculating momentum. That is basically your 20 and 60 day momentum divided by the uh, standard deviation of returns for the year. And that basically uh, is used to rank all of the stocks and the top uh, 30 stocks are selected from it. 
So the 20 and 60 day momentum, if you give them equal weightage, that is the equal weighted. If you give more weightage to the 20 day momentum rather than the 60, that is the quick weighted. These are all mm, things that I did to improve uh, the way you can see it basically. Like if something is moving quickly in the shorter term than in the longer term, longer past, then it will come more quickly in the quick weighted. Steady weighted is more of more weightage to 60 day and uh, less weightage to 20 day. So this I have not backtested at all because this is based on the NSE methodology and I was just uh, th uh, thinking of replicating it and I replicated it. And after that, I broke it up into uh, your uh, uh, large cap universe and mid, mid cap universe and small cap universe. If you choose to use it for anything, you can. I have never used it, so I can't even give you anecdotal evidence nor have I backtested, so I cannot tell you much about it. Okay. So this is how you, uh, you can use this uh, screener link page if you wish to. Uh, the most important ones, uh, I'll again repeat, is the stock trend screener for uh, large cap and mid cap, these two tables. Then your uh, bound strategy for indices. This is also backtested, better returns than Nifty, the buy signal uh, you buy. And after that, uh, you can hold our 60 days. Like you can read this uh, backtest. Based on the backtest parameters, you can choose to conduct your trades. And uh, lastly, this is something that I do, but uh, I don't want to recommend it because I have not backtested it very thoroughly. But still, it sort of works. So I'm sticking to it. Usage is up to you. And this one is something that is very, very useful for uh, all retail investors. Uh, basically, on the last day of every month if this shows a negative this status is negative or it shows a recent crash then you buy into it okay and also if you are uh, choosing uh, like basically think about it this way like the way to position size that's also important in this the way to position size is suppose you have uh, 10k capital to invest into nifty Okay, so if it is in positive momentum, you cannot buy. So you hold on to that capital. Next month, again, positive. You cannot buy, hold on to that capital. Next month, it comes negative. You put that entire 30K chunk into Nifty. Okay, so that is how this SIP works. And it has been working wonderfully over the last uh, one year or so. And uh, I'm going to keep consistently using it. Like this is something which is favored by many people in my group because it's easy to use as well as uh, provides you more efficient accumulation of Nifty units. And since Nifty is always going to keep going up, the drift is always going to be positive for the headline index of any country. And so it just makes sense to accumulate Nifty. Okay. So thank you for listening. And uh, I'm going to stop the sharing now. And bye-bye.